Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this little podcast about yarn dyeing and crocheting and some knitting and spinning. My name's Kayleen and I will be your host today. Welcome to anybody who's new. I hope you enjoy. And uh, for all my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back and subscribing. Um, if you'd like to see more and you're not subscribed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you know when I upload a new video. I try to upload videos once a week. I've been doing on Tuesdays. This week's a little bit shysty because uh, we have had a very busy week and my husband is here. He is, he's out with my daughter right now. Uh, he's on vacation. So we've had a little change in our schedule, but we're rolling with it anyway. So welcome, welcome back. I hope you enjoy. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's get into everything. So let's start with some yarn dyeing. I cannot remember last week how much I talked about yarn dyeing because I never did a shop update, but I do have, um, I did dye one colorway last week, which was Whomping Willow. If you follow me on Instagram, oh, I never introduced myself. My name is Kayleen. I am the host of this podcast. I am a fiber artist and the dyer behind Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarns. You can find me on Instagram as Little Bean Crochet and on Ravelry as KM Weaver. I also have an Etsy shop, which is littlebeancrochet.etsy.com. Anyway, so <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this yarn. Uh, I've been knitting up and crocheting. Yes, I've been knitting, uh, crocheting a lot of things with it, and I'm like so in love with this colorway because it's everything fall so um, I suppose I will just get into my works in progress and my <clears throat> my um, finished objects because I have a couple and uh, then we'll get into some spinning which I've been doing and then had to stop doing which I'll get into and then at the end we'll do some shop updates and life updates and everything of that nature. So let's start with some works in progress and finished objects. So I have a couple of things. One thing is a crochet project which I just gave you a little sneak peek. Sneak peek. Sneak peek of. These are the Reverie hand warmers. These are a Mama Chi crochet design pattern. And I crocheted these up couple days ago. It took me a few hours just to get the pair done. But these are the hand warmers. These are done in my Lux DK base, which is a merino cashmere nylon base. And it's in the color Whomping Willow. So this is how the colorway stitches up. I got some nice pooling going on, pretty symmetrical mittens. Uh, these are fingerless mitts. I would enter these in the middle long for strings and more, but I think they are only doing knit mittens, so I'll have to knit up some fingerless mitts <clears throat> for that. <clears throat> Excuse me, oh my goodness. But yeah, so this is one finished object that I did in crochet this week. I'm super excited for these. I think they're super comfortable. And the only thing I added to this pattern, because I like my mitts to fall a little lower, was a small, I think it's only even half an inch, uh, band of ribbing here in crochet. So these are a fun pattern. These are from Mama Chi's ebook, which is Crochet with Mama Chi. You get, I don't know, a ton of patterns with it. Hats and mittens and cowls and just all sorts of goodness. So if you have not seen that, you should go check it out. But I made these. These are done. <clears throat> I also apologize for the lighting in here. It's a very dreary, like cloudy day. So I have very, I'm working with some weird lighting. Um, but anyway, my second finished object was, I was using the remainder of this skein. This is what's left of the skein. I was playing a little bit of a yarn chicken with it. Uh, this project was living in my, my bag here. I love this bag. I'm obsessed with this bag. This is a Molly Klein bag. Um, I have my little knit, my progress keepers here from Melissa at Nitty by Nature, sent to me. I am obsessed, obsessed. But anyway, so I was crocheting this in the skein. I had enough left and I thought, well, why don't I try a knit project? I finished something, guys. I finished a knit project. This is the Barley Hat from Tin Can Knits. It's a free knit pattern. And I knit it up yesterday. And I finished it yesterday. <laughs> like. Guys, 
look, I did it. I, I, first of all, I'm astounded that I finished a knit project because I've never finished a knit project in my whole life. Like I literally will cast something on and then rip it apart because I get frustrated. Guys, look, I did it. <laughs> so this was with the rest of this yarn. I was making a child size because my son has an abnormally large head. It's probably 19 inches around and the crochet beanie that I made him, the puff beanie, doesn't really fit him anymore. So I was making this and I made it, I think a half an inch smaller than what the child pattern called for. And I'm a little regretty. I really wish I had added an extra half an inch on this hat, but I am so happy that I finished it. Um, the pattern was really easy. It was much easier than I anticipated. So these, this is a free pattern. And if you've never seen the Tin Can Knits um, pattern series, they're basic knit patterns, you definitely should check it out. It's way, way, way beginner friendly. So this hat is knit in the round. I did magic loop style on my circular needles. And there's a garter stitch section. And then the rest is all just stockinette, which is just straight up knit every row in the round. And the decreases were very easy. They told you exactly where to mark off your decreases. Um, it was just it was just a pleasure to knit. I was very, very pleased with how fast this came along. This was a little bit inspired by the Strings and More podcast, which I've already mentioned. Um, but I was inspired to do this hat because Jamie of Strings and More had done one, and I'm like, I really could do that. And I had never seen this pattern before because again, I'm not a knitter by, by profession. I've always just crochet. And I am just very proud of myself. <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. I never thought that I was gonna finish something like this. Um, so it came out great. I don't think it really needs any blocking because his head is so large, it literally fills this entire hat. Uh, and he's only one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I, I did. I crocheted these and then I decided to knit this and then I was kind of holding off doing more before I did the decreases, partially because I didn't want to run out of yarn, but I'm almost wishing I did. But what can you do? You live and learn. So I, in a response to finishing this, of course, I immediately cast on another. So here's my cast on. This is Wigan Tree. This is another Harry Potter tree colorway. Oh, that's coming out nice. So you can see it's really deep red and orange tones, some browns, some more vivid orange, green. It's very fall. So I cast on another. I've only just started the ribbing. I just finished the first round of one by one ribbing. Uh, and then again, this is magic loop style. So I'm just working completely in the round. I didn't, in the pattern, they tell you that you should go down to DPNs, but I think they're just talking if you're using a shorter set of cable needles, um, cable needles, circular needles, hello, uh, and you can't pull through and then continue to knit. Because these are so large, I was able to do this entire hat on these needles. Uh, these are the uh, Knitter's Pride Carbons needles, and I was using the US size six, which is four millimeters. Um, <clears throat> and I had, I think I did pretty good as far as gauge. Uh, is concerned in, in terms of size of the hat. Uh, I don't think I was too far off from what they called for. So I've cast on another. That is my work in progress for knit. I don't have any other works in progress to show for crochet. I still am crocheting together a blanket for a customer down at the local yarn shop in my town. And I am also still working on that darn mermaid blanket. It's just been sitting. I had to replace um, the yarn. I didn't quite like the pink that I was using to accent. Woo! So I picked up some woolies, thick and quick, to use as the accent color for pink because the customer wanted some pink in there with all the teals and purples. So this is the color I chose. Ooh kind of matches. Um, so I still have that in progress, which is what I'm working on. So let's get into something else a little bit fun, which is spinning. I have been getting into spinning lately. Last week you saw that I was using my Franken spindle. This week I have my lovely uh, Lucky Pluck Farm Tree of Life spindle. 
This is a 3D printed sp spindle and you can use it as a bottom whorl so you can attach this and push this on and use it as a bottom whorl spindle or you can turn it over and put the hook on top and use it as a top whorl which is how I've been doing. I'd love to show you some spinning on this but I have some sad news. So my spindle broke. I have to get another one. Um, I tried repairing this with some glue. The, the bond is just not strong enough right now. I can, I can wiggle it around. And so it's not, you can see here, ooh, oh yeah, I can even just pull it off probably. So you can see, it's just not very stable. Um, so I'm very sad about that. I was spinning some merino that I purchased Okay, I got a message. Um, I was spinning some merino that I got from Shirsty Cat and I dropped my spindle and as a reflex I clamped my legs together to try and catch it so it didn't hit the floor and I snapped it right at the juncture where the, yeah, here we go. See? It's just not a strong bond. So I'm going to have to either figure a way to repair this or I may just purchase another one from them um, because this was my fault, see? Broken. How sad, how sad. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful spindle. Very well constructed, very well made and I was hoping that I'd be able to show you some spinning because I have improved my spinning technique thanks to the help of some friendly fiber lovers out there, um, but yeah. There's my spindle. <laughs> we'll just get another one. They're not super expensive. They're, there is a little bit of a waiting time because they have to make the spindle and then I had them stain it for me. So yeah, beautiful. You should check out their Etsy shop. I think it's luckypluckfarm.etsy.com, something like that. I'll just, I'll put it in the link in the description below. So the things that I've been spinning. So last week you saw me spinning this monstrosity of thick and thin. I've actually had someone interested in, in taking this off of my hands, but um, it is very beginner. You know, I was still learning how to draft. I was having lots of trouble drafting this. This is a uh, blue faced Lester, the fiber, and it was dyed by Wendy's Wonders on Etsy. So this is what I was um, spinning when you saw me last week. So then the next day I kept on spinning and I had gotten my new spindle, actually right after I finished filming my podcast is when I got my new spindle. And so I spun this on the new spindle with a little help from my friends in, in Facebook land and fiber groups land to coach me a little more on drafting. So this came out as a nice, uh, I would say DK to worsted weight. And uh, I dyed this I used this as a dye soaker upper when I was dyeing a custom order last week. So I was dyeing a navy tonal and some grays and so I used it to take up the excess dye in the pot and I kind of like how the color came out. So um, that was that. And then I dyed up some roving that I purchased, some, um, some blank roving, some BFL, which is somewhere over there but I'm not gonna get it. And so I spun this from Dyed Roving. Again, this is pretty thick and thin. I was still struggling with the drafting process. And what would happen was, so you can see, so some sections look really great like that, and then some look like this. So I was the problem I was having was when I was drafting, I was drafting too many fibers at once, and I was trying to draft and drop at the same time without having prepped like pre-drafted at least uh, a slight bit of the fibers. So what was happening was I was pulling and then the fibers, they would pull more and more and it would just create this slub, as it's called, in the fiber. And it already had some twist in it so you couldn't draft it out anymore. So what I ended up doing was asking for more help um, in my drafting process and the folks, I think it's like fiber fanciers, fine fiber and spinning somethings, I don't know. One of the groups I'm in on uh, Facebook for more help and they suggested pre-drafting. So this is what I came out with when I was pre-drafting more fibers. So you can see I have far fewer 
slubbly spots, a lot fewer knobs and nubbles going on. Um, it's a much more consistent. There you go. So this was first, this was next. Um, I have a, a lot fewer of these thread-like thin spots and more consistent spinning. And then this was my final spin on my four ounces braid. And I have to say, I am so excited to stitch something with this. I don't even know how many yards this is. It's probably somewhere around 50 yards of fiber. It still is a little thick and thin. There's still spots that are thicker than others, but overall, this is what it looks like. And I'm so happy. I'd say it's a heavy fingering weight to a DK for the most part. So yeah, this came out with one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-nine. So thirty-nine, and this is a two yard, so thirty-nine times two is seventy-eight. So seventy-eight yards of fiber that I spun into yarn that I could potentially make something with. I could knit a hat with this, I think. So I might actually do that. <laughs> I'm very happy with this. And I like the color. I like how I dyed it. Um, and it came out really nice. It's just a single, so I'm not going to make anything crazy. And then, so that was all my BFL that I spun. I still have a four ounce-ish, four-ish ounce braid um, with the, the same dye work that I did for this to spin, but I wanted to try something different. So my, on that faded day when I broke my spindle, I was spinning up this merino. Now, I got this from Shirsty Cat Designs. Uh, I, I don't remember the number. I don't have it with me. Uh, I don't remember the colorway number. She doesn't have names, they're just numbers. And what, it reminded me of a pumpkin. And this is a nice segue. I wanted to spin some fiber and then crochet or knit, or actually kind of knit it up for the pumpkin along that um, Joanna uh, from Opera, the Opera, Stitching the High Notes podcast, her, her user handle is Opera Joe on social media. Um, and then the Once Upon a Corgi podcast, they're doing a pumpkin along. So my grand idea was to spin this fiber, the whole four ounce bundle, and knit something with it, like knit a hat. Like I could totally knit this hat with this and it would be like a pumpkin hat, pumpkin colors. And it would be a little thick and thin and I would have spun the yarn, I would be so proud. So this is Merino, 100% superwash Merino. And um, you know, I just started, I started spinning it and kind of learning about the fiber. And then I broke my spindle. But anyway, I digress. But anyway, I don't really have much else for today. It's a really short, it's not even 20 minutes. I don't have any interruptions, which is crazy. I don't even think I have that many edits to put into this uh, this little video cast here. Look at that, look at that little mini, beep, beep, boop. So yeah, I'm excited to stitch this one up. This, this is by far the best spin I've ever done. And I love singles. So maybe I'll crochet something with this because I love crocheting with singles. Um, but yeah, I didn't have any questions. I put a post up yesterday for Ask Me Anything. I didn't have any questions come in with that. Um, I didn't have any shop update this week. I haven't done a ton of dyeing this week because I was filling all the Halloween pre-orders uh, for the colorways that I had listed, which was the Dark Mark, Troll Bogies, and um, Mount Doom. Those all went out this week. My giveaway winners, prizes went out this week. I did the giveaway for the pre-orders, which got sent out with her yarn. And then I did my 500 followers giveaway on Instagram, which also went out, half went out. I forgot her, her stitch markers. They're sitting on the kitchen table and I put the yarn in the bag and I got everything up and I gave it to my husband. I said, go to the post office and drop this off. Left the stitch markers on the table. That's what life is like with two little kids, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I haven't had a shop up update this week. I've had a light dying week this week, but this weekend, actually, probably, let's start today. So starting today, which is Thursday, September 1st, I'm gonna put a bunch of the yarns into my clearance section 
to try and clear out some stock. Lots of beautiful fall colorways, some kind of spooky, deeper colorways coming up for the fall and winter season. So I'm going to put almost everything, I think, into the clearance section to try and clear some stuff out so we can get some new colors coming in um, and keep my dye pots bubbling, so to speak. So keep an eye out for that. I'll announce on Instagram when I move stuff over. I still have some stuff in there from my summer colorways. There's only a few uh, pieces left and there are some um, there's some gradients that I put into there that were part of the more summer collection, the first run of the Harry Potter colors. So, so yeah, keep an eye out. I'm going to put some of these uh, fall colors like this into the clearance section. So if you have been eyeing, you know, the new colors, Whomping Willow, Wigan Tree, and Elder Tree, you may have a chance to get some at a little bit of a discount. So keep an eye out for that. But I'm so proud. Look, I made a hat. Look. Look, it doesn't fit. <laughs> it doesn't fit me, the child hat, but I made it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I made this. <laughs> I'm so weird. Okay, so that's about it. I really don't have anything else for you guys today. It's been a bizarre week. It's been a really you know, strange couple days with my husband being home. The routine is all different. So um, I guess that's it. I will just see you guys next week. If you have questions or comments for me, please, as always, leave them below. You can leave them in the Ravelry group. You can leave them on my Instagram. Send me a message on Etsy. However you'd like to get in touch with me, I am here. So I will talk to you guys next week. Have a fabulous long weekend. If you're in the United States, enjoy the holiday. And uh, I will see you next week, hopefully with some more dyeing mm -hmm. and maybe more spinning if I can get an order in for a new spindle or repair the one I have. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. Look how pretty this is. Like, come on. Come on. It's so beautiful. So I'm going to mourn the loss of my spindle. Maybe I can just get a replacement part. But anyway. That's it for me. I will see you guys next week. Have a lovely weekend and we'll chat soon. Bye.